Okay, so let us start with the next topic, uh, Laplace transform. Okay, so till last class we have completed with uh, all parameters. So do you have any difficulty in uh, these parameters? Z parameter, Y parameter, H parameter, and a, B, C, D parameters. So all these parameters we have seen uh, this how they are defined in linear form and in matrix form. Okay. Then we have seen its equivalent circuit and then how to calculate all these. So numericals based on that that we have computed. Okay. So now let us start with the new topic of the same unit, which is Laplace transform. So Laplace transform, it is invented by the uh, mathematician Pierre Simpson Laplace. Uh, so the definition as per this uh, Laplace transform, there are two types of uh, Laplace transform. Either uh, it may be a single end plus transform means which will be valid for the limits zero to infinity and double ended Laplace transform. Its limits are varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. That is the only difference. Okay. And uh, basic definition of Laplace transform. If a function f of t is there, its Laplace transform, it is defined as L of f of t. It is equal to, it is defined as f of s, capital F of s, where s is the Laplace variable and it is given by s is equal to sigma plus j omega. Okay. So this f of s, it is equal to integration of 0 to infinity if it is a single-ended uh, Laplace transform. And if it is double-ended Laplace transform, these limits are from minus infinity to plus infinity. Then f of t, the same function whose Laplace transform we want to find, into e raised to minus st into dt. So you have to solve this integration and then substitute the limits. So that is the Laplace transform of f of t. You have to substitute the value of f of t. Okay. So with this definition, the we'll see the standard uh, functions and their Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of impulse function del of t it is equal to 1. So all these um, equations, which uh, um, um, all these functions and their Laplace transforms, which we'll see in this table and the properties. For every property and every uh, this function, there is a proof for that. But I don't think proof is not needed in your uh, syllabus. Uh, it may be covered in mathematics. And if you want how these functions, Laplace transform of these functions have occurred. So I'll record one uh, lecture on that and I'll put it in our uh, drive. Okay. So those who are interested, they can go through that. Otherwise, you assume that the Laplace transform of impulse function that is del of t, it is 1. Then Laplace transform of step input. Step input is u of t. u of t, how it is defined as step function we are defining as uh, from minus infinity to 0, the output is 0 or that function is having 0 value 
and at time t equal to zero, that function is having unit value, one value till infinity, plus infinity. So that's why it is called as unit step function. So it is just like a step of a staircase. So having a height of one, and the um, that height starts at time t equal to zero. Before t equal to zero, that function is having zero value, and after t equal to zero or greater than t equal to zero, the value of that function is one. That's why it is referred as unit step function. Step size is one. Okay. So this Laplace transform of this unit step function it is defined as one upon s. And if you want to derive all these, there is no um, um, rocket science. It's not a rocket science to derive all these formulas. You substitute these values of uh, this function u of t in the definition. Uh, let us see it uh, one. I'll immediately uh, show it to you. This function f of t is nothing but your u of t. It's Laplace transform. We want to find f of s. So that is equal to integration zero to infinity f of t. Now what is f of t? It is u of t. So u of t is your unit step function, which is having value equal to one from t equal to zero to plus infinity, and having value zero for t less than zero. Okay. So substitute this value of f of t into e raised to Minus st into dt. Okay, so after substituting this, it will be simply integration. Uh, this unit step function will change the limits. Its limits are from zero to infinity, and it is same as that of your uh, single-ended uh, Laplace transform. So integration from zero to infinity f of t is one between this time, and into e raised to minus st into dt. So you have to solve integration of only e raised to minus st into dt. So what is integration of e raised to minus st with respect to time? So your constant is uh, your uh, this uh, uh, t is a variable and the coefficient of t is minus s. So you have to take integration of this. If you will take integration of this and substitute these limits, you will find that its Laplace transform is coming it as one upon s. Okay, for RAM function, if time um, uh, RAM function it is defined as t. So how we are defining RAM? RAM starts at origin and it rises its value diagonally. Okay, that is having slope. Equal to one, and it is uh, varying diagonally. That is, at time t equal to one, its value is one. Amplitude is one. At time t equal to two, its amplitude is two, like this. Okay, and uh, at time t equal to zero, it is zero. So that is RAM function, and its Laplace transform. It is given by one upon s square. If it is an exponential function. How you are drawing exponential function? Exponential function, uh, that is exponential charging and discharging of capacitor. You have seen. So that exponential function, it is defined as e raised to minus a t. If it is e raised to minus a t, then its Laplace transform is one upon s plus a. Okay. So this also we can immediately derive exponential function e raised to minus a t. So you substitute this uh, f of t as e raised to minus a t into e raised to minus s t. So if we are multiplying two exponentials, it will be addition of the coefficients. So it will be e raised to s plus a into t. So minus of s plus a into t. Into dt. If you will integrate this, its integration is one upon s plus a. So that's why the uh, Laplace transform of e raised to minus a t is one upon s plus a. If it is e raised to a t, then its Laplace transform will become one upon 
s minus a because if it is e raised to minus at its laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a if this a e raised to at if you want to find its laplace transform it will become 1 upon s minus a okay then for sine function sine of omega t if function is sine of omega t its laplace transform is omega upon s square plus omega square so for this also it is very easy to uh, define sine function and cosine function you can express it in terms of exponential it is e raised to at minus of e raised to uh, e raised to minus at minus e raised to plus at divided by 2 j or uh, that is for sine and for cosine it will be the plus sign and divided by only 2 so uh, it is a function of uh, in terms of means sine and cosine you can express in terms of uh, exponents so that exponent and exponential laplace transform of exponent we have already seen e raised to minus at laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a and e raised to plus at laplace transform is 1 upon s minus a so from that if you will solve that and uh, simplify it uh, you will find that the sin uh, laplace transform of sin of omega t it is omega upon s square plus omega square for cosine t it is s upon s square plus omega square right so uh, these are laplace transform of sin and cosine then if this ramp function we have seen its laplace transform is 1 upon s square and for exponent e raised to minus at we have seen laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a now if you want a damped ramp uh, signal that is t into e raised to minus at it is defined as t into e raised to minus at then we can see from this laplace transform of t is 1 upon s square whereas laplace transform of e raised to minus at is 1 upon s plus a so from this by analogy even you can say that the laplace transform of t into e raised to minus at it will become 1 upon s plus a square okay so it is 1 upon s plus a whole square then if it is damped sine wave if it is multiplied by exponent sin is multiplied by exponent then we know uh, laplace transform of sin is omega upon s square plus omega square and for exponent e raised to minus at here it will be 1 upon s plus a so simply you have to replace s by s plus a so it will become omega upon s plus a whole square plus omega square so this is uh, laplace transform of damped sine wave similarly laplace transform of damped cosine wave it is defined as for cosine uh, its laplace transform is s upon s square plus omega square and we know that exponent laplace transform of exponent is 1 upon s plus a so you have to replace simply s by s plus a so here e raised to minus at into cos of omega t its laplace transform will become instead of s you substitute it as s plus a and here also it will be s plus a so it will become s plus a divided by s plus a whole square plus omega square so these are the few laplace transforms of standard functions uh in uh, notes even i'll give you some more uh, i have already given you the notes handwritten notes in the uh, handwritten notes all the derivations of this i have already given it to you okay so you can go through that and uh, check whether uh, all these derivations are okay or not okay they are okay only and a uh, few more uh, uh, standard functions have given in that so simply you have to by heart uh, for the, this uh, particular uh, subject and uh, if you want um, logically how it comes 
then you can uh, go through the derivations but uh, these derivations uh, will not be uh, not asked in your this ec paper so derivations means um, how laplace transform find laplace transform of e raised to minus 80 into cos of omega t so nobody will ask you such type of questions because it is understood that this is a standard function and its laplace transform is this so you should know this and how to derive this so that i already given you in the uh, handwritten notes so uh, these are the uh, standard functions and their laplace transforms how to make use of these functions and their laplace transform that is our concern in this particular subject okay and uh, there are some uh, standard properties of uh, laplace transform these properties also they are having all the proofs and uh, all these proofs i have included in your uh, handwritten notes because all these proofs and all will be studying in next semester we are having the uh, subject named signals and system so in that signals and system will derive all these expressions okay so by that time you just simply remember that these are the laplace transforms of this standard functions and i'll be covering the same subject in next semester so i'll derive i'll teach you all these derivations also and if you want in this semester i'll record one video and i'll put it on our uh, website uh, that uh, not website uh, our google drive okay so you can refer that now laplace transform of d by dt of f of t if f of t is a function and its derivative is known uh, given to you let us say derivative of f of t with respect to time and you want to find laplace transform of this uh, derivative function so f of t is let us say given to you and its d by dt its laplace is given as s into f of s minus f of zero so this f of s is capital f so that means laplace transform of this function f of t so if function is known to you if let us say this function is del of t so if del of t is given here and d by dt of del of t if you want to find laplace transform of this how you will find that laplace transform of del of t is known to you it is 1 so you substitute that f of s as 1 here and into s so s into f of s minus f of 0 f of 0 is nothing but the initial condition that is at time t equal to 0 what is the value of that function so this is in time domain okay so in time domain the function is defined as del of t so you substitute value of t as 0 find out the initial condition that is del of t what is the value of that and substitute it here then you will be able to use this property so the property of derivative of a function it states that laplace transform of a derivative of a function it is given by s into f of s minus f of 0 so where this f of s is the laplace transform of this function okay now next property is if instead of derivative if it is a integration then the laplace transform of f of the integration of 0 to t f of t into dt or it is f of t into d2 its laplace transform it is given as f of s upon s so here also if a function is given as let us say u of t so if u of t is given to you its integration from 0 to t if you want to find its laplace transform then you know the laplace transform of u of t is 1 upon s that means capital f of s of u of t it is 1 upon s so how you will find laplace transform of integration it is f of s upon s so here f of s value is 1 upon s 
substitute the value of f of s as 1 upon s divided by s so it will be 1 upon s square and so on so forth okay now if you want to delay the input so if this function is delayed this u of t it is delayed as u of t minus a so u of t minus a into f of t minus a if you want to find laplace transform of this then it will be e raised to minus at into f of s okay so this f of s is again laplace transform of this function f of t then laplace transform of e raised to minus at into f of t it is f of s plus a so this we have made use of this property here you can see a uh, damped sign its laplace transform e raised to minus at into sin of omega t its laplace transform is omega upon s plus a whole square plus omega square we know uh, let us say f of t is say uh, sin of omega t if f of t is sin omega t here f of t is sin omega t multiply by e raised to minus at if you want to find laplace transform of this that is sin omega t laplace is omega upon s square plus omega square so that is f of s and what you have to do now you have to replace f of s by f of s plus a simply s plus a means this e raised to minus at this a is there okay that's why we have replaced this s by s plus a and your uh, laplace transform has become 1 upon s you replace by s plus a here so omega upon s plus a whole square plus omega square so that is the laplace transform if you will use this property also you can find this particular value similarly you can find the same for this damped cosine function also okay so e raised to minus 18 into f of t So f of t is let us say cos of omega t. We know uh, f of s for cos omega t is s upon s square plus omega square. Now here also you will replace s by s plus a. So if you will replace s by s plus a, it will become s plus a upon s plus a whole square plus omega square. Okay. So by using this property also you can prove these two derivations. Okay. Now. if it is laplace transform of f of at if you f of t laplace transform of f of t is known to you it is f of s say then if you want to find uh, multiply by some constant a to t so if you want to find laplace transform of f of at then it will be 1 upon a into f of s upon a okay so simply you have to replace in f of s f of t you know its laplace you know f of s so you can uh, you know f of s so you have to replace s by s upon a okay so s you have to replace by s upon a and you have to multiply that f of s upon a by 1 upon a so that will be uh, that this property states then uh f of t limit of uh, limit t tends to 0 f of t if you want to find laplace transform of this in s domain it will become limit s tends to infinity s fs and limit t tends to infinity f of t it is in s domain it will become that is if you will take laplace transform of this it will become limit s tends to 0 s fs okay so here here limit t tends to 0 f of t its laplace domain is s tends to infinity so the, here the in, uh, limit uh, is time tending to 0 here time is uh, that s function or uh, s variable it is tending to infinity so limit will become s tending to infinity and if limit t tends to infinity is given 
in time domain that is limit t tends to infinity f of t its laplace transform becomes limit s tends to 0 s fs so you have to multiply this uh, f of s laplace transform of f of t is known to you it is fs so multiply by s and s fs you know now its limit you have to take if it is limit in time domain as t tends to 0 you have to change it as s tends to infinity and if limit in time domain is t tends to infinity you have to change limit as s tends to 0 so these are the basic properties of laplace transform you have to remember for this particular subject these standard functions and the properties uh, their laplace transforms and uh, uh, these properties their laplace transforms and uh, derivations of all these properties also i have given it in the notes so you can go through uh, if you are interested and see okay so now using these properties we'll try to solve the differential equations we know in this electrical circuit we uh, came across some differential equations in second unit we have seen first order differential equation as well as second order differential equation if it is simply uh, rc circuit or rl circuit series or parallel or whatever combination or it may be rlc circuit series or parallel but in your syllabus we have seen only series rc and rl and series rlc circuit so from series rc and rl circuit we are able to get only first order differential equation whereas if we are um, analyzing second order differential equation we will get it from the rlc circuit okay so if such differential equation is known to you or given to you how to solve it using laplace transform okay so in third unit we have solved all these differential equations in time domain only okay so in time domain it is a tedious one or it is a time consuming but for this particular in same exam you have to solve these differential equations in time domain only though the laplace transform method is very easy to solve all these equations we'll see now but it is for your end same examination not for in same examination because this is the uh, content of your uh, syllabus in third unit not in second unit but we can solve all the numericals of first unit as well as second unit which we have already solved in time domain all these problems will be able to solve it using laplace transform and you will come to know if you know the laplace transform of these standard functions and properties then it is very easy to solve the uh, these equations okay so let us say this is the second order differential equation which is given to you d2y by dt square plus uh, it is d2v by dt square plus 6 dv by dt plus 8v equal to 2u of t where u of t is you know it is a unit step function and the, your uh, initial conditions are given as v of 0 it is equal to 1 and v dash of 0 it is equal to minus 2 v dash of 0 means dv by dt at time t equal to 0 is minus 2 so if these two values are given to you and this is the differential equation how to solve this differential using laplace transform so what we'll do we'll take this is the equation so first write this equation in time domain it is d2v v is nothing but v of t by dt square plus 6 dv v is nothing but v of t by dt plus 8 v of t equal to 2u of t this is the equation so on both the sides we'll take laplace transform so if we'll take laplace transform on both the sides what will happen for first term 
what is the laplace transform of d2v by dt square so from standard uh, properties and uh, st standard functions we know that laplace transform of d2v by dt square it is s square v of s v of s is nothing but your laplace transform f of s that is v of s that's why it is capital minus s into v of 0 this is v of 0 in time domain that's why it's uh, it is written in small letters whereas this v of s it is in the s domain that's why it is written capital letter so always you have to keep in mind in laplace domain we represent the function in capital letters whereas in time domain we represent that function in small letter okay that's why in previous slide also we have seen this f of t u of t all these are uh, having uh, small letters this f of t small f of t and this f of s capital f of s that means it is a transform domain if it is transformed domain then we are writing it in capital letter and if it is in time domain we are writing it in a small letter so that is a usual notation throughout your engineering okay so s square into v of s minus s into v of 0 minus v dash of 0 where v dash is nothing but dv by dt of 0 at time t equal to 0 so this is the laplace transform of d2v by dt square first term now second term laplace transform of second term that is dv by dt 6 is constant we'll keep it outside and what is the from the property we have seen in previous slide uh, d by dt it is uh, its laplace transform is uh, given as um, s into v of s or s into f of s minus v of 0 that is uh, f of 0 in time domain so s into v of s minus v of 0 plus 8 v is function its laplace is 8 v of s okay and on another side 2 into u of t 2 is a constant you keep it as it is u of t we know laplace transform of u of t is 1 upon s so that's why this term will become 2 by s now we got laplace transform of this whole equation now you substitute the initial conditions initial conditions are given v of 0 is 1 v dash of 0 is minus 2 substitute it here and club all the terms of s square together s together and constants together from this side okay so you will get this s square having v of s this you substitute then uh, 6s plus 8 into v of s is equal to s square plus 4s plus 2 divided by s now take this term on this side so that it will be vs only so vs is equal to this s square plus 4s plus 2 divided by s into s square plus 6s plus 8 now factorize this particular uh, term you will get s into s plus 2 s plus 4 at denominator and this is the numerator now partial make partial fraction of this if you will make partial fractions you will find it you can express it in the form of a upon s plus b upon s plus 2 plus c upon s plus 4 find the values of a b and c if you will find it you have already done in uh, plus 2 so you will uh, be able to find a as 1 by 4 b as 2 by 4 and c as 1 by 4 substitute the values here and take inverse laplace transform for taking inverse laplace transform you know laplace transform of f of t it is a unit step function it is 1 upon s so inverse will be true for that so if it is 1 upon s its inverse laplace will be 1 if it is 1 upon s plus 2 then it is e raised to minus 2t because 
if you are taking function f of t as e raised to minus 2t its laplace transform is 1 upon s plus 2 that's why is inverse is also true so you, by taking inverse laplace you will get this function in terms of exponent this function also in terms of exponent that is e raised to minus 4t so this take out 1 by 4 constant common and this is now v of t 1 by 4 One plus two e raised to minus two t plus e raised to minus four t into u of t. If you want to solve this differential equation in time domain, it will take at least one or two uh, a four size of pages, full length. Whereas by Laplace transform, you will be able to solve it within a single page. So that is the only difference. Okay. so we'll take it uh, more numericals uh, will solve but by that time in next lecture uh, i hope time is going out so we'll stop here today and you uh, try to uh, remember these uh, formulas of uh, standard laplace transform the functions and their laplace transform and the properties in next class we'll see all this derivations also if you want um, i'll take it extra lecture and then we'll cover it okay so we'll stop here for today thank you